Hey, Zane. Yeah. Do you know it's another Whiskey Pop episode today? Nah. Did you also know that maybe one of our most famous presidents caused the creation of the Moonshiner? Wait, what? Or that whiskey may save you from hyperthermia? That can't be true. Or that someone actually drank $100,000 worth of whiskey in one year. Now that could be true. I'm not talking about us, Zane. Yeah. I'm talking about somebody else. (laughs) Yeah, okay. So, you know, can you kind of guess what we might be talking about today? Let me guess. Another one of those whiskey, believe it or not. That's right. And we're going to do that win? Right after this. I'm Zane. And I'm Jeff. And today we're going to be... Whiskey believing or not. That's right. <laughs> we have a ton. A plethora? <laughs> would you say I have... No. Oh, we have I a would lot. say you yeah, have a plethora. Yeah, I'm sure you do. <laughs> a lot of stories, shall we say. Whiskey stories. That are amazing. Yep. But first... Oh, but first, I guess this is whiskey pop. That's right. And we probably should pop something open right now. Yeah, we need to have some whiskey to wet our whistle. I don't know where you want to wet your whistle. Why are you saying it like that? Where do you get off? <laughs> I get off right here. All oh, right. Wait. wait a minute. So we're Roll gonna... that back a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not rolling that one back. <laughs> so we got Clyde May Special Reserve Straight Bourbon Whiskey. It's 110 proof from Kinnakukukuka uh, Ridge. Kinnakukukuka Ridge. I could pull it back up. <laughs> <laughs> it's from a ridge in Alabama. It's in Alabama. That we're gonna try today. I say we open that thing up right now. Ah! I'm gonna smell this whiskey. Yeah, I did. Oh, it smells nice. Oh, you going all in. Okay, I'm going in. Hmm. Hmm. I mm. can tell you all about that, but when will I do it? on Friday during second pour. So come back and see us then. For now, we're gonna do a little bit of thing called whiskey. Believe it or not. Or not. You know, whiskey, believe it or not, this is like our third time we've done this. That's right. We did a whiskey, believe it or not, like way, way back. Yeah, season one. That was season one. Then we did a whiskey, believe it or not, in season two. Season two-ish. And this would be season three's whiskey, believe it or not. I think so. And we usually do some pretty strange stuff, but would you believe our first story of the day is about this man right here. Party on, dudes! Abraham Lincoln. Not to be confused with the vampire killer, axe-wielding superhero. Okay, so this story goes way, way back. All right, so we're gonna have to roll it back to the 1800s on this story. Right. Obviously, because Abraham Lincoln's from the 1800s. Right, this is a story precursoring him as an important human being. Sort of, yeah. I mean, you're it's, right. what his father, the father Thomas Lincoln. Yes, uh, was one to move the family from Knob Creek area. Knob Creek, as in that Knob Creek, the Knob Creek, that Knob Creek, mm. into Indiana. So he thought he would sell the family land. All right. And buy a whole bunch of barrels of whiskey, plus twenty dollars, plus twenty bucks, and sail down the Ohio River to Indiana to get some new property and a new promised land of opportunity. That sounds awesome. So why didn't he just build himself a raft and float over there? He did, he built himself a raft, they put all the whiskey on it and his tools and the family, including Abraham Lincoln, shoved him off in the river so he could float down and get that sale of the whiskey done so the family can move to Indiana and live on a nice little farm and, you know. Wow, so that sounds amazing. It was until the boat sank when it hit the Ohio River and he lost all but three barrels of whiskey and his tools and barely got out with his life, which, Abraham Lincoln always had a contentious relationship with his father and probably blamed some of that for that. Ah. On top of that, Uncle Mordecai was depressed drunk. So he had a lot of drinking issues and whiskey issues in his family, which by the time he was an adult, he was kind of in the temperance movement. That's right, so fast forward. He fast forward. And surrounded he, himself with temperance people. Yeah, exactly, and so he became the president of the United States. We go to war, 
and he decides that we need to have a tax that would support the money needed for the war. Huh. Can you imagine a federal government deciding to tax people? I know, what the gall. How right? about taxing things different than taxing other things? Oh, they did. So they tax luxurious goods and liquor. And so, unfortunately, that tax put a lot of distillers out of business. So what if you were like, say, an upstart distillery, say, in the Appalachians? And you can't afford to pay taxes, you do what? <laughs> you shut down. And you do moonshine. <laughs> and so Abraham Lincoln inadvertently created a the moonshine moonshiner. culture. Wow. Yeah, and on top of that, it even some states even made it illegal to buy corn other than for food. Yeah, it was it was barley and corn, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. So it would force the moonshiner to be created in <clears throat> Abraham Lincoln, you know, the one of the greatest presidents of all time. So if it's not tortillas and it's not like bread loaves then you just can't have the that's right. grain, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. And you know, to make whiskey, you need at least 51%. <laughs> <laughs> Are we still going on that? <laughs> oh, Abraham Lincoln inadvertently created the moonshiner. Believe it or not. Believe it or not. This next story, this is pretty funny. Well, sort of. Is it ha ha funny or just like, I can't believe Kind of both. Kind yeah. of both. Yeah, right. There's this woman named Patricia Hill who purchased a bed and breakfast. A, a house that was going to be converted right. into a bed and breakfast. And so she hired a guy to help her take care of the remodel and caretake of the place while they worked on this house. And his name was? John Saunders. So John Saunders. Is a criminal. Sort of. Is he? Well, let's, <laughs> let's let you decide. All right, so let you decide. Dozens of bottles of whiskey first stashed during Prohibition. It remained hidden for decades until someone decided to swipe it. And police say it was an inside job. The owner of South Broadway Manor says she discovered more than 100 bottles of 100 year old whiskey that looked just like this, wrapped and sealed in wooden crates. They were stashed underneath the staircase during Prohibition and were only discovered when they were about to go to a museum. But they haven't yet made it to that museum. Police charged the manor's former caretaker, John Saunders, with drinking 52 bottles of the whiskey. And so John is hired to help Patricia to remodel this house. And while remodeling the house, they found 104 pre-prohibition bottles hidden in the stairs in the walls of the house. Which would be, you know, roughly around $200,000 plus. According worth to New York auction houses, yeah. Worth of whiskey. Whiskey. So, in his kindness, John decides, I will hide the whiskey downstairs in the basement where I'm living. He was such a nice guy. And hold it back so when you go to sell it at auction, it's been safe and sound. Fast forward a few months, the auction house says, all right, let's bring the whiskey to us. We'll get it on there to sell. So they brought out 104 bottles of whiskey. Sort of. Instead, police said Saunders drank half of the supply. They estimate more than $100,000 worth. It's a shame that it took historic whiskey to realize and come to this point, but if it saved his life, then maybe that's the best of it all. At his preliminary hearing today, Saunders was held on felony theft and receiving stolen property charges. John Saunders drank 52 bottles of that $100,000 worth of whiskey in 52 weeks. Do you think that could possibly be one of the biggest heists of whiskey ever? Uh, next to Pappy Gate, that'd probably be pretty big. That would be pretty big. Yeah, but here's John. They get taken to court and they're like, find DNA evidence on the bottles. And he swore to his innocence. But you know, the funny thing is, before they could take him to court, uh oh. John oh. died. <laughs> and the 52 bottles of $100,000 worth of whiskey went with him. No, there is a lesson to be had. That's right. The reason why he's a criminal is because he didn't share. That's right. That's just a crime. Believe it. Or not. <laughs> oh, I'll believe it. Believe it or not. Can you believe that? Can you imagine drinking 52 bottles of whiskey in a... a really short year? period of time. Wait. Wait. Um, I think we've done that. By yourself. I think we've done that. <laughs> <laughs> You know, but hey, in this next story, whiskey actually saves a life. Now, see, this one I think is bullshit. Come on, there's no way. You can't make this stuff up. Okay, okay, okay. Let's let, let's think about it. Our next subject revolves around this subject here.
Okay, Listen, so Rose had room. Okay, <laughs> she could have put him Jack on there. Could have survived. I've seen a video of a horse riding down river on one like just like that, and everybody in the comments says, "See, I told you Jack would have fit up on there." <laughs> yeah, and that's whiskey. Believe it. Or oh no, no, no. That's oh. not the end of the story. Oh, no, okay. I'm my bad. That would that's not anything to do with whiskey. Yeah. But there was a baker on the Titanic, the head baker, of course, uh, by the name of by the name of Charles Joggin. Is that like as in, I'm going to go jogging a little bit? Maybe. Or, I just really need you to jog in my memory. We're just hoping we get the last name right. Yeah, I don't know. It could be, <laughs> it could be Yogan. No, it's, I'm going to say jogging because I think it sounds funny. Sounds like jogging. Anyway, he jogged himself upstairs when he found out that the Titanic had hit an iceberg. And he went and made some hors d'oeuvres or something. No, he started having his crew and him help them get on life rafts and get the boat oh, to get away. Yeah, yeah. He even supposedly refused to get on one himself early on. Oh, so he was just, like, uh, helping uh, the women and children first. And some of the guys who were just big weenies. Oh, right. Anyway, so he helped him get on. Then after a while, took yes. a break, went downstairs, and decided, you know what the hell? The boat's going down. Bottoms up. And he poured himself a whiskey, and then maybe another whiskey, and, and, and then maybe another whiskey. Eventually, now buzzed. He was Charles inebriated. Goes, goes back up to the deck and helps further put people in the boats that are any left. And he starts throwing lawn chairs up. Deck chairs. Deck chairs, hoping that maybe they could be used as a flotilla. Yeah, that's right. And then he said, well, I've helped again. I'm going to go back downstairs and what? Well, he decided that he should imbibe. In fact, he took his little camera with him and set it up. Wait a minute. And then said, welcome to Whiskey Pop. This is the Titanic. No, he didn't do that. But he did go back downstairs and drink more whiskey. That he did. And then finally came back up toward the end as the boat started to... Go into the ocean deeper and deeper. Now, rumor has it he was uh, hanging on to said railing with his flask in hand. Man, now that's an action <laughs> shot. Hey, hey, you know. I mean, I wonder how they got that footage. Sideshow collectibles. <laughs> hey, make a figure of that. That would be awesome. Oh yeah, we'd buy it. Yeah, we'd, we'd buy it. It'd be back right there on the whiskey cabinet. Yeah, that'd be awesome. So Charles goes down with the ship. There he goes. Gets into the water. Now in the iciest, coldest water, hypothermia. He in dies instantly. But no. He continues to survive, finds an up the overturned boat that other people are on, can't fit on it, hangs on to the side of that boat for like two hours in the waters. And this is where I go. Jack died in two minutes. Uh, no, Jack died like this. I think he was frozen to it, that's right. So Charles, eventually a friend of his, who was also a feller, feller, fellow baker, Say that five times fast. Feller baker, helped him get into another life raft and then he lives and survives. So how the hell did Charles survive the icy waters of the Atlantic? It is a pickle, is it not? Uh, see, that's the thing. They Some people think Charles should have died in those icy waters within minutes. Should have. But some think that because the whiskey and the inebriated state of Charles saved his life. Because Charles didn't understand how much danger he really was in. So why, he just didn't give up? He just didn't know to give up. <laughs> so was it the whiskey that saved him or was it the will to live? I mean, this is almost as, as believable as going to the moon or something. Yeah, like that was real. <laughs> but hey, up to you. At this point, you can either believe it or not. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> oh, I beg your pardon, sir. It's the cold. This next one is really not hard to believe, I think. No, no. I mean, when you really think about it, the U.S. government wants the best for us. It, they do. They want to coddle and hold us close. They do their so well to protect us from harm. They do. And in fact, as long as they get what's coming to them... They'll do whatever it takes. The 1920s, we're in the middle of a temperance movement. Remember that thing that Abraham Lincoln kind of helped support? Yeah, but that was way before. It kept going for that whole period of time. Are you meaning to tell me that there were people who believed that whiskey was the devil's spirit. Oh, for sure. People still think that today. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah. I've heard that. That's a, we, we still bless them. Yeah. Anyway, okay. there was this thing called, I don't know, the Prohibition era. Yeah, that's right. And in the Prohibition era, they made it difficult to even have whiskey, even medicinal whiskey. So there was this little organization that started producing their own whiskey on the side called, I don't know, the Mafia. <laughs> I thought you were going to say the U.S. government. <laughs> no, it was a mafia. So to curtail people from making illegal whiskey, the government thought, okay, so any grain whiskey that we have, 
We only want to be used for products that are for use, not for drinking. We will add methyl alcohol to it to keep it being a consumable. Which is basically a, 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 what is it, a tannic alcohol made out of uh, wood. wood. And yeah, whatnot. it's an alcohol comes from wood and it's naturally in whiskey, but just at very, very low levels. These guys were putting in super high levels to make it not consumable because they thought if people knew that that was in there, they wouldn't drink it. Because what they're doing is, is like people were taking like, let's say uh, rubbing alcohol. That's not yep. a really bad example, but yeah. something like that off the shelf. And then they would use that to create their- Their whiskey, their, their moonshine. Their moonshine. So yeah. they thought, you know, they couldn't be adding that much in it. They would still naturally come out in the distillation process, but it didn't. And the government started to see poison, alcohol poison deaths show up in hospitals. You mean to tell me that the whole thing of like that moonshine's gonna make you blind might have been true? Hey, that's what it's from, actually. People used to think that whiskey would make you blind and moonshine because of this. Doctors started seeing so many people come in with alcohol poisoning from illicit, illegal production of whiskey that they were telling the US government, please stop putting that in there, it's not working. You know what the government did? They doubled down. They just added more. By the time it was over and at the end of Prohibition, over 10,000 Americans had died from alcohol poisoning that the U.S. government put in there. On purpose. To stop you from drinking. Believe it. Or not. Believe it. Or not. So what do you think? Did we miss a whiskey story today that just oh, seems... I guarantee you we missed a bunch of whiskey stories. Uh, so we'll be doing more in the future, I'm sure, because I'm, I'm, I know we're going to have to do another yeah, but whiskey, believe it Tell us one of your favorite stories you've heard. And if it's amazing, hey, maybe we'll regurgitate it right here on the show. That's right. You might make your own story and we might have to do it right here. But please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to ding his dog. <laughs> because that's how we tell you when we have new content coming out. That's right. And be sure to catch us on Friday when we do another episode of Second Four. And we review Clyde May's Special Reserve Straight Distilled Bourbon Whiskey. Distilled by who? Uh, Kunnickel, Kunnickel Ridge Distillery. Kunnickel. We'll have it down <laughs> on Friday. That's right. Second Four, Friday. So in the meantime, guys, cheers. Cheers. Cheers.